Our dinosaur of the day is Dicelotosaurus letau vorbecki, which was a suggestion from our Twitter follower, Samuel at BizTheAnswer. Dicelotosaurus means uncatchable lizard, and it was a dryosaurid iguanodontian, an herbivore, that lived in the late Jurassic. Dicelotosaurus fossils have been found in the Pendaguru Formation in Tanzania, and the Berlin Museum of Natural History discovered and excavated Dicelotosaurus fossils when it was still German East Africa. Rudolf Virko named Dicelotosaurus in 1919, and all of the Dicelotosaurus fossils were found in one quarry. Between 1910 and 1913, they found 14,000 bones, and in the area, they discovered other dinosaurs, including sauropods such as Giraffa Titan and Dicreosaurus, the Stegosaur Kentrosaurus, and the Theropod Alaphrosaurus. Dicelotosaurus has an interesting story behind its species name, the name Letau Vorbecki. It came from a German national hero, General Paul Emil von Letau Vorbeck. He fought in World War I in East Africa, and he was known for his guerrilla warfare tactics. He commanded 3,000 German troops and 14,000 African soldiers. They were local soldiers known as Askaris, and at that time, African soldiers were often discriminated against. But Letau Vorbeck treated all his soldiers equally. And he was fluent in Swahili, and according to one historian, quote, It is probably that no white commander of the era had so keen an appreciation of the African's worth not only as a fighting man, but as a man. So Letau Vorbeck was never defeated, but he did surrender after he heard about the armistice in November 1918. And his German soldiers were repatriated, but the Askaris were put into camps, so he worked really hard to make sure that they were treated decently. When he got back to Germany, he came back a hero, and he actually opposed the Nazis. Hitler offered him a position in 1935, and he declined. And during the Nazi regime, he was often harassed, but the reason he survived is because he was so popular as a World War I German hero. Unfortunately, many Dicelotosaurus fossils were destroyed in World War II during bombing raids, so some of the best-known records of it are now via drawings instead of the skeletons. Of the fossils that survived, only one still has about 50% of its skeleton. Interestingly, Dicelotosaurus used to be considered a part of the genus Dryosaurus, but now it's in its own genus, Dicelotosaurus. And it was medium-sized and ran on two legs. And it was precocial, meaning it was born in an advanced state and it could take care of itself at a young age. And it became mature after only 10 years, then it could start to mate. It's unclear how quickly it grew, but it could probably reach the size of a large kangaroo. And in 2011, there were two paleontologists, Florian Weitzmann, who we tried to contact but unfortunately could not get a hold of, and Oliver Homp and their colleagues, they found that some of the Dicelotosaurus bones deformations were probably caused by a viral infection, which makes it the oldest evidence of viral infection known to science. So this infection is similar to Paget's disease of bone, which has abnormal bone destruction and regrowth. Scientists have found thousands of Dicelotosaurus bones at varying stages of maturity, possibly coming from one herd. And both these juvenile and adult fossils allow scientists to study their brain at different growth stages, which is what Dr. Stefan Lautenschlager and Dr. Tom Hubner did. The smallest Dicelotosaurus specimen was about 2 feet long, and the largest was about 15 feet long. So what they did was they used CT scanning and 3D imaging to reconstruct the brain and inner ear of a 3-year-old and a 12-year-old Dicelotosaurus and they published their findings in the Journal of Evolutionary Biology. They learned that juveniles had strong hearing and cognitive processes, but a lot changed as they grew older, presumably to help them adapt to their environment. The younger Dicelotosaurus had a shorter snout and larger eye sockets, so it was probably cuter. And I think we've mentioned that before, baby dinosaurs were cute the same way human babies are cute, with the larger eyes and the, some more pronounced features. The younger Dicelotosaurus also only had 20 teeth versus the adult had 26 teeth. And the adult had teeth that was wider, whereas the juvenile had three upper teeth that were slimmer than the rest, which may mean that the juveniles were omnivores and the adults may have been 
only herbivores. So although their study helped show how parts of the brain developed in dinosaurs, more research is needed to establish a pattern of brain development. Dysolitosaurus was part of the Dryosaurid family. So it was in its own genus, but the larger group is the Dryosaurid family. And the Dryosaurids lived during the mid-Jurassic and early Cretaceous period in Africa, Europe, and North America. These were primitive iguanodonts, and they were medium-sized. They had long legs, small forelimbs, and small short snouts. And they also had soft tissue above their eyes, which made them look like they were frowning. And you can see this in some modern birds of prey. They were bipedal, with three toes on each foot, but if you were to compare it to a human foot, they would only represent your second, third, and fourth toe. They were missing the first toe, which is called the hallux. They looked somewhat similar to ornithopods, such as Hypsilophodon, so they used to be considered Hypsilophodonts, but now they're classified as part of the Iguanodontia group, which is not close to Hypsilophodon, the dryosaurids did not have premaxillary teeth, which means that they only used their beaks to bite off plants. And the first dryosaurids were found in the 1870s in North America, and then later more were found in Africa in the early 1900s, and then in Europe in the 1970s. The dryosaur fossils were actually found earlier in Europe, but had been misclassified. <laughs> 